A wind breathes among us, calling us to gather in the name of the Holy One. A fire burns within us, calling us to service, calling us to prayer. A spirit moves around us, calling us to turn in joy toward the sorrows of the world. In your turning, we welcome you to worship a Covenant Presbyterian Church and invite you to bring your life to the burning, breathing spirit of compassion in our midst. This morning, I am delighted to welcome to our worship several readers who will share the story of Pentecost in their native language. I also want to welcome Donnie Whitehead. I honestly believe, I truly believe, that God wakes up the morning with a saxophone. Its tone is so vibrant, so velvet, that the sun just kind of wakes up. And that's God's great gift to us, one that Donnie is sharing with us this morning. Friends, in the life of the church, we are called to creative thinking about new ways of being church. We have taken on some new ways of expressing hospitality, particularly to our food insecure and our homeless friends. Every week we have a food pantry and we also have a little free food pantry on our property. And folks can come to those two sites and receive food to tide them over for a time. We especially thank all of our generous volunteers and donors who make this ministry possible. If in this time of sheltering in place, you feel an itch to grow in your discipleship, I highly encourage you to go onto our website and take a look at the virtual study opportunities we have here at Covenant. On Sunday mornings, there are several ways you can grow in your faith with several different leaders. And those times and those opportunities are listed on the website. Or if you're interested in a midweek option, we have a Wednesday evening option. There's a group studying with Mark, the Dietrich Bonhoeffer's book, Life Together, which promises to be a rich experience. And on Tuesday mornings, we have a midweek Bible study, studying the whole idea of hope as presented by Lewis Smedes in his, his book about hope. So if that's something that you desire, there are plenty of opportunities, the life of the church goes on, and you can continue to find ways to grow. On Tuesday, our session met and did a lot of discussion and research about options for regathering. And at the conclusion of this meeting, what the session decided is that at least for the foreseeable future, through the summer, we will continue with our virtual worship services. When the session reconvenes in September, we will begin to study plans for reopening. But again, a timetable is simply not available at this, at this moment. And now the wind, the breath of God, the spirit blows where it wills. We hear its sound, but we don't know where it comes from or where it's going. Let us come together in the spirit to worship God. With the psalmist, we pray, may the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord.
Let us pray. Loving God, as your church, we are an odd gathering. We thank you for the widely different types of people and expressions of faith which constitutes the membership of your church in this century. We give thanks for those who appear born to express faith through rigid creeds and behavior. We give thanks for others who seem destined to follow Christ among innumerable questions and doubts. We give thanks for members whose faith appears to be a profound, childlike simplicity, unhurried and unworried. We give thanks for those who seem unable to find one satisfying word with which to describe you, yet whose faith is constantly renewed by a wordless awe in the presence of unnameable love. Lover of diversity, God of all souls, continue to give us the grace to treasure each other with all our oddness and to use these differences as we minister to the diversity of people who share this 21st century with us. To your praise and glory, amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, when we celebrate the gracing of the church with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul has these words to share with the church at Corinth. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. 
Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. Amen. There you are. Hey, I want to say hi to all the children and invite you to come up. And whether it's your birthday or not, whether you've got one coming up or not, we're going to celebrate a birthday today. So happy birthday to us. Come on. I brought a little decoration for our birthday party. Can you see what that says? You read that? I think it says, happy birthday. Why am I talking about that today? Anybody have any ideas? Well, sometimes, sometimes people call Pentecost, which is the celebration we're having today in worship, we call that the birthday of the church. Happy birthday to us, because you're the church and, and I'm the church. All of us together are the church. Not the building, but the people. Long, long time ago, there was a gathering of God's people in the city of Jerusalem. There were people from everywhere. All over the world came for that. And the reason they were having what they called Pentecost Festival was they were celebrating and remembering the time when Moses brought the law or the Ten Commandments to God's people. So that's what they were there for. But then on that day, something really strange happened. God's Spirit came out among the people. And they all started speaking in ways in their own languages so that all of their neighbors who were from all these different countries could hear them and understand them. And so they learned the story about Jesus and his love for them. And that's what we celebrate as Pentecost now. And then that first group of people who heard that story about Jesus and understood it they all went out into the world from Jerusalem and, and shared that wonderful, wonderful story about God's love for all people. So they kind of went from this group that was scared and hanging out behind locked doors in a room to people that the whole world soon came to know. A church was born. We were given life. It's such a great, great story. I bet you like birthday parties. I'm wondering what those have been like for you during this time when it's kind of hard to get out 
and go see your friends. Have any of you had birthday parties? I've seen pictures of those drive-by birthdays where you celebrate your friend's life and, and, and their birth by going by their house and waving and honking. Maybe you decorate the car and send them presents through the mail. I brought a gift bag. Have you ever gotten something like that? Maybe you've gotten a package that was all wrapped up for your birthday. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? What do you want for your birthday? I bet you can think of many, many things that would be a lot of fun to play with. Today, I want us to think about what it would be like if God came to your birthday party and handed you a gift. Just said, here, I have made this especially for you. Wow. What do you think that would be? What would you like God to give you? That's something that we could spend a whole lifetime thinking about, I bet. But I'm guessing that you already know some of the gifts God has given to you. Maybe you have the gift of making other people laugh or making other people feel really good, especially if they've been feeling bad. Maybe your gift is music. Have we not heard gifts of music today in this worship service? Donnie playing his saxophone and Kim playing the piano, Jacob singing. Those are all gifts that came straight from God. And the great thing about those gifts is that they are not only good for the people who have them, they are good for us because they help us worship God. They help us feel better about our lives and who we are. I don't know what gift God is giving you. Maybe it's many gifts. But you know that it's from God when you can take it and use it to show love for other people and love for this planet. And when you're doing that, it's a gift that will continue to grow even after you give it away. So happy birthday. Happy birthday to us, the church. Thank you, God, for giving us life and a purpose in this world. Amen. We'll see you next week. The Pentecost reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. Paul and Barnabas the Elector, the Luntun, and 
Existanto de ca ethau mazon, legontes e amitas, ios que habitamos en Mesopotamia, en Judea y en Cappadocia. En el punto y en Esia, svou vlastní řečí. Byli ohromani a divili se, což nejsou všichni, kteří tu mluví z Galileje. Jak to, že je slyšíme každý ve své rodné řeči? Partové, Médové a Elamité, obyvatelé Mezopotámie, Judeje a Insel und Wüstenbewohner. Und wir alle hören sie in unserer eigenen Sprache, die großen Taten Gottes verkündeten. Erstaunt und ratlos fragten sie einander, Auer, Mäder, machten sich darüber lustig und weisen, die Leute sind doch so klein. Our second reading this day is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I'll be reading from chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Listen. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of the flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This too is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Oh, holy God, surround us with your peace. Fill us with your love and send us with your truth. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I cannot breathe. I cannot breathe because George Floyd was not allowed to breathe. A knee to his neck for over eight minutes. Another unarmed black man lynched Another sanctioned brutalization of a person of color. Like Ahmaud Arbery, like Eric Gardner, like Freddie Gray, like Michael Brown, like Trayvon Martin, like Lemuel Penn. And not just black men, but women too. Breonna Taylor. A Tatiana Jefferson and Pamela Turner. Say their names, look up their stories, 
realize that their blood flows into the river of toxic racism that has been polluting this nation's promise and potential since the very beginnings of our story. Realize that their last breaths have risen up and formed a sacred cloud with the thousands upon thousands who have lost their lives to the unjust system of white supremacy since the days of chattel slavery. Even if we only listed the names of the known lynchings between Reconstruction and 1950, it would take four full pages of the New York Times to list them all. I cannot breathe. Of course, that's not literally true. I'm breathing right now. And I trust that if you are listening to this, you are breathing too. Thanks be to God who woke us up this morning and put breath in our lungs. But I'm not breathing easily. I'm worried about the air I'm breathing and that you're breathing. And not just the COVID-19 infused air. I'm worried about the cultural climate we live in, the hate and fear-infused atmosphere that leads someone, someone like my sister, Amy Cooper, to call the police on an African-American bird watcher in Central Park. There's something in the air that made it hard, if not impossible, for her to share the air with Christian Cooper, the bird watcher who, as they say, is no relation to Amy, except that they are related as fellow human beings, both created in God's image, trying to share this planet. In his letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul names the spiritual atmosphere that has always had a way of infecting us and our relationships with one another. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, he says, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. To breathe in the air of our times and our world that is controlled by the demonic one is to be carried into dehumanizing and broken relationships. It's to be so contaminated by sin and injustice that we forget who we are and who God created us to be. It's like the devil gets into our diaphragm and disorients our thinking, much like someone who gets trapped in a house on fire quickly, quickly gets desperate and confused and, and overcome. We forget that we are to be stewards of the earth and lovers of our neighbors as well as our enemies. We begin to think that we can only relax and we can only breathe when we are around those who, who look like us and think like us and, and maybe even agree with us. But Paul also hints at a way out of that burning house, at some good news, at a reorientation of heart and mind through the saving grace of Christ. Through the life-giving breath of Jesus, we can be raised up and we can be sent out again as new people to do the good works of peacemaking and justice and reconciliation that God pre prepared beforehand to be our way of life. As Luke tells the story in Acts, the breath of God has come like a mighty wind. It's given us clean air to breathe. The power of God has blown all of us 
sheltering in place, disoriented disciples out from behind our fear-built walls and out into the streets. Through the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit, we've been empowered to be proclaimers and demonstrators of the beloved community God is creating through Jesus. After Pentecost, the Word of God is no longer confined to the hearts and minds and memories of those who walked for a while with Jesus on earth. No, after Pentecost, the church effectively became the living, resurrected body of Christ for the whole world, empowered by God to do the exact same ministry of healing and hope-giving that Jesus did. This year, to be honest with you, it's hard for me to get past the first verse of the Pentecost story. It's the one that says they were all together in one place. A few months ago, when our busy lives had us stretched thin and, and traveling all over the place, I would have joked that it was the first miracle of the first church for everyone to actually be together in one place. Today, and for many of us, it feels like the one thing that would be enough. But for now, out of love for one another, we are trusting the Spirit to keep us connected over many places even as we worship the one God who comes to all of us right where we are. But even though we cannot this day be all together in one place, I hope we will pay close attention to another gift of the Spirit that is articulated in today's story. A gift that, frankly, I've never paid a whole lot of attention to. You know, usually when we read this passage, we notice the diversity of the people of God. It seems like folks from every tongue and tribe are there. The family of God is bigger than we ever imagined. The fractured, alienated peoples of the earth are healed when the Spirit descends. We are brought together in unity, and that's certainly not a bad or unhopeful reading. But what Tom Long points out is that not only is Pentecost a diverse ethnic gathering, it's also a historically impossible gathering. Look, I tend to skip over some of those hard to pronounce people and their tribes too. But here's a good case for digging into the details. Take those Medes, for example. Not only would they have needed to travel a few hundred miles to get from Mesopotamia to Jerusalem for the festival, they would have had to travel over several hundred years in time. Historians tell us that by the time this Pentecost celebration happened, the Medes had pretty much died out exiting this earth at least two centuries before. Talk about not breathing. Same thing with the Elamites. They get a shout out in Ezra 2.7. I'm sure you all knew that. I had to look it up. But after that, crickets. They're never part of the biblical story that we read again. They, too, are lost somewhere in the past. So do you see what's happening here? Not only is Pentecost a gathering of God's people from north and south, from east and west, it's also a gathering of the living and the dead. Luke's not kidding around when he says they were all, all together in one place. What we are being asked to believe is that when the Holy Spirit comes roaring into our lives, all of our reality, all of our experience gets stirred up and people from every time and place are given a second wind. 
Will Williman puts it this way, that day at Pentecost, it was like all of our past, the ancestors whom we lovingly remember as well as the ones we try to forget. The events out of our history that we commemorate with monuments as well as the ones we tried to sweep under the carpet. Everything, everything was caught up, brought back, remembered, blessed, and redeemed by the Spirit. What I'm hearing in that word is that if we want to breathe freely, if we want to stop getting sucked back into the burning house of racism and all the other pollutants that keep us sick and divided, then we need to come face to face with our past. We must remember and recall our history honestly in order for it to be redeemed and then for us to be set free. And that's a very, very hard thing to do. The Czech writer Milan Kundera recalls that when the communists took over his native land, there were two venerated leaders, Gottwald and Clementis. There was a widely circulated photo that became a kind of icon for that new regime. Gottwald and Clementis standing arm in arm on a balcony overlooking thousands of their supporters. But then by 1952, things had changed. Clementus had been discredited by the party and then hanged as a traitor. Kundera writes that the propaganda section immediately airbrushed him out of history and obviously out of all the photographs as well. Ever since, Gottwald has stood on that balcony alone. I think we too can be tempted to pick up an airbrush. Over and over we hear our neighbors say, oh, slavery is over, let's move on. Or the oppression and the degradation of women is over, let's, let's move on. The past can be so painful. Memory can get messy. We want to just let it go, be free of it. Kind of like we want to believe that this pandemic will just go away if we, if we stop focusing on it so much, or if we stop worrying about how our treatment of this earth might have brought it to birth in the first place. But Pentecost gives us another option. Pentecost offers the gift of the Spirit that will enable us to speak truthfully about our past and with our past. It offers us the gift of speaking about and with those we have hurt and those who have hurt us. It offers the possibility of real listening and real hearing by everyone. Pentecost promises the possibility of redeeming our past, even the parts that are ugly, the parts we would rather forget. But it also promises that freedom will come only if we are open to it. Let us please remember that, this, that the disciples spent a long, long time praying to be open and receptive to that spirit that came crashing in. I once heard a psychotherapist say of his discipline that most of what we do is to try and keep people's pasts from killing them. Countries like South Africa seem to understand this when, when they invested in the hard work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, revisiting the painful stories and injustices that came through the sin of apartheid. 
Sometimes it feels that one of the central qualities of our culture is the belief that we can somehow be over and done with our past, that we can either ignore it or progress our way out of the haunted history that has led us to where we are right now. But as followers of Jesus trying to live faithfully in this hurting culture, I urge us to welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit, to beg God to send it, because it is the presence of the Spirit that will enable us to find the strength and the courage to look at and to listen to the realities of our past if we don't face them, if we do not sit with our ancestors, those we like and some that we don't. They're going to continue to choke the life out of us until we gather with them, until we stop airbrushing them out of our history. As Martin Luther King taught us, my destiny is inseparable from yours and from all who have come before us and all who will come after us. My destiny will not be bathed in the light of hope until everyone's destiny can know the promise of that same hope. I cannot breathe freely until George Floyd can breathe freely in the goodness of God's creation. I cannot breathe freely until the Spirit of Jesus replaces the stale, polluted air of our past and our present with a fresh wind that brings life to all. So come, Holy Spirit. Come. Amen.
As we come to this privileged time of prayer, our hearts are with the grieving families of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery, whose deaths have sparked protests around our country. We stand and grieve with those communities continuing to suffer violence and injustice because of racism. We also remember the families in central Michigan displaced by the breaching of two dams this week, as well as the families of cyclone victims in India and Bangladesh, and the families of the victims of the plane crash in Pakistan. In our own community, we offer prayers for Ann Page as she recovers from surgery, Mike Swanson and Paula Zimdars, who are undergoing treatment for cancer, the Brewer family dealing with significant health challenges, and our homebound and mobility challenged members, Anna Holzhauser and Pauline Marshall. Let us turn to God in prayer. Great God, you wrap us in the embrace of your love like a mighty, gentle mother, and you carry us like a strong and tender father, setting us on our feet to be your free, mature, and joyful daughters and sons. Now in our weakness, we pray to you because we cannot come through life's troubles unscathed, and with souls and bodies stressed and strained, we cannot meet each other's needs without your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come with healing power. Spirit, gift of Christ, fill us with God's love. Great God, we come to you with the resurrected Christ, who bore the weight of human flesh and blood to Calvary for your love's sake. And even now, as conquerors of death, he pleads with you for all your suffering children. Holy Spirit, come with me. We join our prayers to the prayers of Christ for those we know who are ill or troubled, and for all your suffering children who are beyond our reach of mind. We know that all are brought home to your heart in the prayers of Christ and in the silent intercessions of your Spirit, who comes from your deep heart to ours and returns again to you with all our deepest longings. Holy Spirit, come with healing power. Spirit, gift of Christ, fill us with God's love. Heal us and help us comfort and strengthen us, deepen our joy. Let our love reflect your mighty tenderness and serve your healing gentleness. Holy Spirit, come with healing power. Spirit, gift of with God's love.
eternal God, there is great longing in the world. People are desperate because of the suffering they endure. Earth cries out for peace. Oppressed people cry for justice. Women, men, and children weep in sorrow and pain. How can we have any hope for the world unless you are with us? Through all the mysteries of pain, sorrow, and human vulnerability, we dare to believe that you are on our side, that your love for us is greater than ours for you or for each other. Call us then to prophesy by the lives we live, by our patience, by our compassion, by our belief in the future you will make for us. Let your church proclaim the great things you are doing with hope for the nations of the world, for every person born and every living creature. Holy Spirit, come with me. So, living God, let praise begin here and now with us, welling up from our hearts, rising towards the skies, until praise fills the universe and joy is unconfined, as you delight in us and we delight in you forevermore. This we pray in the name of your Son, the very breath of life who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore, wherever you are. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.